So today we're gonna to be doing a cast iron, cast iron seared ribeye with um, pan roasted tomatoes, some asparagus, a garlic compound butter, and then I have strawberries flambe for dessert since I got so much feedback on the uh, Bananas Foster, so thank you for that. But the idea is this, is I'm, I'm gonna start and just keep going until we have the entree plate, and then I'll probably do the dessert after that. So Teddy's gonna break this up into however many episodes it takes, but just be mindful that as you watch this, there's gonna be more pieces, and collectively this is, this is gonna be hopefully something that you'll enjoy watching, but then also, as always, feel confident to cook yourself if you're at home. So I got these ribeyes from Publix. I think with all the ones that I bought over the weekend that I took some of their selection. So these are a little bit thin for what I like. You know, these are probably 3 8 of an inch, half inch at best. I shoot more for 3 quarters of an inch is a pretty ideal thickness. But um, for what we're doing today, there's not gonna be any issues as far as uh, demoing what's going on. So, as always on, the, on this show, in these segments, I like to give little tips and tricks that make food so much better. So one thing that happens when you go eat at your favorite steakhouse, I mean a high-end steakhouse, they're gonna take your steak, they're gonna season it aggressively, and they're gonna let it sit out for probably at least 20 minutes, if not a half hour. And that makes a tremendous difference because if you think about what's going on in this cooking process, if you're heating a steak to mid-rare, that's 130-ish degrees roughly. So you have something that's 40 degrees, you're taking it to 130 degrees in the center, which means the, ex the exterior is gonna be significantly more than that 130 degrees. Now, if the exterior is 40 degrees versus, say, 70, 75 degrees because it's room temperature, that's less cooking time that it's gonna take. It's gonna be less dry that the exterior is gonna get. It's gonna be um, less conduction that's gonna take to heat that center. Sometimes you get a mid-rare steak and the center is mid-rare, but half the steak has that gray in it or that off color because it's just, it's been cooking so long. So um, I would say stick, stick with a half inch thick steak or a little bit more and let it sit out for you know, if you can let it sit out for a half hour, that'd be great. We're probably gonna end up in the neighborhood of, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, which, you know, for TV will work fine. But for flavor, it could be a tiny bit better. So I go very heavy on salt and pepper. Whether you grill, whether you cast iron sear, um, you're going to lose at least 30% of the seasoning that goes on there. This is kosher salt and black pepper, six to one ratio, six being the salt, one being the black pepper. Um, if you want to add a little bit of rosemary or thyme or garlic powder or onion powder or, you know, if you like heat a little bit of cayenne or, um, you know, they have different other mixed pepper blends that you can get. So just add whatever you want to that if you want to incorporate some other flavors. But your base seasoning, you know, six to one salt versus pepper is always very good. Things about buying beef, um, how does it feel? How does it smell? and what is its overall color. You know, a little dark spot like that doesn't mean anything. You know, it should be firm to the touch. It should be bright red. The fat should be white, you know, and then if you smell it, not if you have a crowd back steak when you first open it, there's gonna be, you know, kind of a, a strong aroma. But I mean, beef, it should, you know, it should have a very, very mild smell to it. If there's any bit of sour, sometimes crowd back beef can actually get sour, it'll look fine. So. Um, pretty simple rule, if it looks good and smells good, you know, you're in good shape. But typically anything you buy from the store, meat-wise, if you use it in two to three days, you're in good shape. So we're going to have that sit there for a few minutes. Like I said, I have my two cast irons here. Um, I'm sure everyone knows what these are. Maybe not everyone has cooked with them. So they, they're very heavy, very strong, and they got a good thickness. So what happens is it builds up a lot of heat in there and it's great as far as conduction goes. This is, I love frying chicken in this pan right here. Four chicken thighs, 16 minutes, perfect every single time. So, and they last for a long time. Like I said, this is my grandma's. This is actually carbon deposits from probably goulash or chili that she overflowed 
when I was maybe that big because it, uh, it doesn't get used much. This is my typical go-to, but I fry chicken with this one. So anyway, one thing to be careful of with cast iron is it is brittle. So if you were to say drop this and it landed on the handle, that handle, because I've had this happen, will, it can break right off there. So it's strong as far as um, the, the amount of heat it can take, you know, beating it around, banging a utensil in it. I don't know why you'd be doing that, but just in case you were. But as far as like the impact it could take, this handle's pretty sensitive. So the iron is porous, meaning that it will absorb um, flavors, liquid, oil. So that, when you hear people refer to a, um, a cast iron pan being seasoned, that's what they're talking about. They're talking about the presence of oil in the, in the surface pores of the pan. So that's why I brought mine in today. If you look at this, it's got a little bit of shine around here, but it's pretty dull in the center. This pan needs to be seasoned pretty bad. I just haven't got to it. Um, this is a pan that when you use it, you know, hopefully you can rinse it out with just a water and the tiniest bit of soap. You know, I'll make steaks or vegetables or whatever in there. You know, I wipe everything out with a paper towel. It goes in the, um, it goes into the sink with maybe a drop or two of whatever dish detergent I have, you know, Dawn or palm olive. And then I just, I'll wipe it out with my hand or a sponge. You know, that, that's it. It doesn't ever have to see, you know, anything abrasive. Every now and then you can burn it up and you'll have to use steel wool or something like that. Then, you, then you're gonna have to season it. This has lost its seasoning just because of repetitive use. So, um, you have this. I'm using paper towel because I know everyone has paper towel at home. So I don't wanna show you something and then have you sitting there thinking, well, if, you know, how, how am I gonna do that? So this here is canola oil. It is my um, go-to oil for cooking. Um, it has a very high smoke point, very neutral flavor, and relatively inexpensive. This pan is room temperature. So I'm putting this in there, and I'm being a little bit liberal just because it's faster. And then what's gonna go on is I have this oven preheated. 500's probably a little aggressive for this guy. Um, at home, if, you're, if your oven runs a little cooler, I would go to 500. I think 475 is fair. So what I would do is just, you have the oil in there that's maybe two tablespoons, and then you're just taking your dry paper towel, there's nothing on this, and then all I'm doing is just wiping that oil everywhere. And that's gonna take place not just on the inside of the pan, but also on the outside. So the bottom, the handle. The only thing is you don't wanna go too overboard because you know since the pan is porous, it's going to absorb that oil to an extent, but it's gonna make a layer on the exterior. So if your oil is a little bit heavy, where it's actually gonna you know, form a very small layer that will cook in there. And if that's not even, you'll wonder, it's like, what is this puddle over here on this left side of the pan? That's what it is. So I've wiped that down pretty good. Now, if you look at it, it definitely has an excess of oil on it, but it doesn't have oil to the extent where it's gonna pool, you know? And it's all the way around. I even got it on the handle. You can tell because my hand is shining. So 475, one hour, upside down. Okay? If you're scared to grab that big heavy thing out of there, do that the night before. Turn your oven off, go to bed, and then get it out the next morning. You don't have to worry about, you know, it because it, it does have a pretty good amount of weight. And I am mindful that, you know, some of the people that may be cooking at home, you know, that, that's a scare to them. So I get that. 